Hi, this is Scott at StartAtherapyPractice.com. I appreciate your interest in my client tracking spreadsheet. When I first started my private practice, I didn't have a clue that I should be tracking some very important numbers. I created this spreadsheet in order to do just that. Even though I use a paid EMR, I still use this spreadsheet to keep up with and track some important numbers and dates. It has been indispensable to the success of my practice, and I'm super excited to offer it to you for free to use and make your practice successful. So let's go check it out. Now, at first, any spreadsheet can look busy, but don't be overwhelmed. Let's take this one step at a time. Before we jump in, let me point out that you do not have to use all of the aspects that this spreadsheet covers. So let's go to the Active Clients tab. If you do not have a need for one of these columns of information, simply hide it. I would not suggest all the way deleting it because you may want to actually use it later. To hide a column of information, simply highlight the column, right click, and click Hide. The column is really there. You'll see the letter I column here and the letter K column. Well, K does not come after I. So if we highlight both of those, right click and unhide, column J shows up. It was just hiding. The column still exists. It just cannot be seen. So, okay, let's get into the details. First, as I mentioned, this is the active clients page. You can tell where you are and where you may want to go by looking at these tabs at the bottom. I'm going to start with some more of the obvious information. On the client's page, the active client's page here, you'll notice the client's name goes at the left. I have a couple names in here for an example. And each client's information runs the entire length of the row. Here's their basic information. If you have a full page of clients and need to add a new client somewhere in the middle, simply go all the way over to the left like we are, click to highlight an entire row, and then right click and choose insert. And a row will appear there for you to input new information. Now if we scroll to the right, you will see some closely placed columns with dates. These columns will allow you to track when prescriptions need to be renewed for any of these disciplines, OT, PT, or speech, or you can replace those with a discipline other than those. These columns will track when a reevaluation is due. Now I like to color coordinate my therapy disciplines, which is why PT is blue, OT is green, and speech is pink. Of course, you can change or eliminate these colors if you want to. The dates that I put into these cells, whether it be for the referral received, the PT eval date, or needs PT eval or treatment, any of these columns that have a colored header, blue, green, or pink, the dates that I put into those, I like to give myself an alert which turns red, as you can see on this spreadsheet. So referrals, I like to give myself a one month's heads up of before that referral is actually past due. Let's say I'm Brat's OT prescription was received today and today's date is November 1st, 2015. If the prescription is good for six months, then I want to be alerted that a new prescription needs to be requested in five months, which will give me one month to actually get the prescription signed by the doctor. Of course, you can set any time parameter that you want. If you need more or less time, just project out the date that you need in order for it to be alerted with a red color. So if I need five months past November 1st, I'm going to put March 1st of 2016. Now when March 1st, 2016 arrives, this cell will turn red and I better pay attention to it because I have one month to acquire the new prescription. The same thing for a PT, OT, or speech evaluation or reevaluation. That's what these columns are for. If I want to give myself one month's heads up, I simply project the data out to a month before the actual evaluation is due. These three columns here are for what I want to know if a client actually needs PT, OT, or speech. So if I get a referral for a client and then I pass that along to one of my therapists, I'll usually project out a date three or four days from now 
in order for it to turn red. And then I can pay attention to it and ask that therapist, hey, have you started treating I'm a brat? So any red cell on this spreadsheet means, hey, pay attention to this. This is due or going to be due very soon. This column here, the date script requested plus 10 days, helps me track if I need to follow up on a prescription that I requested. In my practice, I send unsigned prescription paperwork to the doctor. I give them 10 days to turn that paperwork around, which is more than generous. But that aside, I give them 10 days to get it back to me signed and dated. Most of the doctors around here are pretty slow with paperwork, so I need to track to be sure we get those requests back. You may not want to give them 10 days, so project out any uh, date that you want to on that category. But it is very handy in case more than one person is actually tracking if prescriptions have been returned. This column here is who the physician is. Now, as good as therapists are, sometimes they are slow on paperwork. I created these columns to let me know if an evaluation report has been turned in. Again, the color tips me off to which discipline I'm looking at. This says PT eval report turn in date. These dates are for one week after performed. So I give my therapist one week to give me a report. You can change that time to your liking. If you have no need for this feature or do not want to track this, you can hide these columns. Highlight, right click, hide columns. Now I would not recommend totally deleting any columns. You may want to use them later and it potentially will mess up your discharge client sheet page here at the bottom if you plan on using it. We'll talk more about the discharge client page later. This place of treatment column, this column along with the physician column, how did they hear about us column, the funding column, and the diagnosis column are each drop down lists. In other words, if you click on a cell, you will notice an arrow appearing at the right. Click on that arrow and you will be given a list of choices to choose from. This limitation of input data makes it possible to run reports, filters, and graphs, which are super helpful. You can add or change the choices in these drop down lists from the list sheet down here. Just add to or delete these lists and they will be available for choice. Whatever you add or delete will be reflected on the active clients page. Do not highlight a whole entire row and delete that row. Simply go in there and click each individual cell that you want to change or delete. Deleting an entire row on this page could potentially mess up the active clients sheet in the drop down list. Now, if you add a new choice to this list page and it does not appear on the active client sheet immediately, you may need to close down the spreadsheet and reopen it in order for it to appear. I experimented with this feature on different Excel programs, whether it was Excel 97 or Excel 2007 or 2010. Each one reacts a little bit differently in how it operates. All right, back to business. Go to active clients sheet. The initial referral date is very handy for tracking when referrals come in. These numbers can be presented on a graph, which we will go over later. The last bill mailed is just what you think it is. If you treat self-paying clients, you will want to track when the last bill you sent was, if you're not having them pay when they receive the treatment, which I do recommend. Copay column is just that. Do they require a copay? You can put that here so you know how much to charge them. The photo release column. If you take photos in your practice, be sure to get your clients to sign a release. If they do not want you to take photos of them, you can put that here. This column is blank for you to track something of your choosing. You can always add more columns. I recommend that if you add a column that you do so at the far right. Just add it on by highlighting the column. Right click and insert. Let's scroll back to the left. These multicolored columns do more than just look pretty. These columns represent the different places that you may treat clients. There are six choices here. You may not have that many places where you treat clients or you may have more. If you don't have that many places where you treat, you can simply hide some of these columns. Or if you have more, you can add some more columns. Just rename the columns to your liking here. Once you input a client's information in a row, put a one in the appropriate place of treatment
This column is for the total units per week that that child receives. Add up all of the units that a client potentially could be seen in one week. Be sure to add each discipline together. Add them all together and put them here. This will be super helpful to see on the unit total page, which we will go over in a minute. First, I want to explain the discharge clients page. It is set up to look just like the active client page. Once you discharge a client, highlight the row on the active clients page. And then copy the row. Now go back to the discharge client page and find where the client would go alphabetically. Highlight the row below where you want to be placed and then right click and choose insert copied cells. Now you can go back to the active clients sheet and delete this one. One important thing you need to be aware of is that the number of columns need to be the same on the active clients sheet page and the discharge clients page. Otherwise, when you copy and paste a client, the information will not be aligned correctly column wise. This is why you have to be careful when you add or delete any columns on the active client page, unless it is to the far right of the page. It's okay to hide a column on the active client page and it will continue to exist and appear on the discharge client page. If you do not want to keep up with the discharge clients on this spreadsheet, then there is no need to worry about having columns equal on the active clients and the discharge clients. Okay, let's jump to the units total page. This page is for potential units only. In other words, the amount of units that your practice potentially could see. These numbers at the top come from the active clients page in our pretty colored columns on the left and also in the total units per week column. As you can see in column B, in the gray shaded area, it says total potential units per week, and this is all clients. So it's adding up all the potential units that your practice has or can see in one week. The purpose of this sheet is to see how your private practice is doing as far as potential units seen over a time period. And what we can do is take these numbers and we can represent them in a chart and we can see how our practice is doing over time. What you want to do in order to make this magic happen is you would input a date. And as you can see, we have multiple dates in here. So what you would do is fill in today's date. Let's say it's 23016. And then you would simply input the numbers that are here at the top on 23016 into the row that is 23016. So if there's a one here in the green client count, I'm going to put a one. Zero on pink, zero on blue, one on orange, one on white, and zero on yellow. And as you can see, it automatically totaled those numbers in the gray column B. In order for that to show up on our graph, double click the graph and it will show which numbers are appearing on the graph by the blue outline. Simply click on the square where it makes an arrow and drag it down one. And you will see that our unit total went down, took a big nosedive. It's a very handy graph to know how your practice is doing over time. Let's go over to the actual units seen page. This page is just what it is. It's the actual number of units that your practice treated in a time period. You would put the date that you want to measure here. Let's say it's 1215 of 2015 and you have multiple therapists. Maybe it's only yourself, which you could certainly use the spreadsheet if you're a solo therapist. But if you have multiple therapists, as you can see, you can put as many as you want. So right now on this sheet, these are pretend numbers. I made these numbers up in order to display how this works. So therapist one on 8-1-2015, they saw 22 units. And that number could be over a two week span. It could be over a month, however you want to break that down. You just want to make sure it's consistent so you track it over time. 
After you enter each therapist number across the column, it will automatically total that number here. What is really handy about these numbers is on the graph page down here, these numbers will be put into this graph where it says actual units seen by date. And as you can see, it says therapist one, two, three, four, five. Of course, those names will change as you put your therapist names in there. This is a great visual way of seeing how your clinic is doing actual unit wise over a time period. Now, here's another handy thing. If you scroll down here on this graph page, remember, this is the actual unit seen by date. Scroll down and here's the potential units. So visually, you can compare these two graphs of potential and actual units to see if there is a difference or a huge discrepancy in your private practice. It helps diagnose problems in your practice as far as potential units to actually seen units. Of course, these are example numbers, which is why they come nowhere near matching. So if this were actually true, we've got some serious problems in our private practice. Now, remember, the graph in here is only as good as the information and numbers that you input into the spreadsheet. Just as a side note, if you want to change the cells that this graph tracks, simply double click on it and go to the top and you can do select data. That will come up and it will show you currently what it's tracking. If you want to change that, simply highlight the cells that you want to track. Be sure to get the same columns in there. and click OK. Now it's changed. Select data. That's what it's tracking. Here's what I want it to track now. That way if you only want to track the last three months, you can do so if you want to track the last three years. Break it down however you want. The doctor page. This is just a place to put referring physicians and their contact information and any notes that you want to put. There again, you don't have to use this page if you don't want to. A doctor report page. I like to give the doctors that refer to us a report once a month of the referrals that they gave us and what happened with those referrals. It's a great marketing tool because it keeps them reminded of your private practice. So you simply put the client's name in here, date of birth, when they were referred to you, what they were referred for, when the evaluation was performed, did they qualify for therapy? Who is the referring clinic? The referring PCP? What note do you want to put right here for your reference? Then I take that information, I paste it into a Word document and send it as a fax or take it by the clinic just to let them know along with a friendly little note of thank you for the referrals. Please let us know if you need any other information. I want to go back to the graph page because there's some other graphs in here that are very helpful. These come from the active client page. And so as you're putting the information in the active client page, know that it's being graphed in order for you to make some sense of how they heard about you, the place of treatment, their funding, their diagnosis, and the doctor referral numbers. How super helpful is this information? How did they hear about you? This can help you tremendously in your marketing time and money. Just making sense of how people are hearing about you and how the word's getting out. The place of treatment, real quick, visually you can see where most of your clients are treated. The funding, how are most of your clients being funded? Diagnosis, and doctor referral numbers will help you pay attention to the doctors who are referring mostly to you and who you might want to market to more because they're not sending many referrals to you. So I love looking at graphs. It visually helps me know how my practice is doing. The referral count by month and year. This graph right here comes from the numbers over here in this column. So where do these numbers come from? These numbers come from the active client page sheet and the discharge clients page sheet. There's probably a magic, super cool way to make this automatically populate, but my Excel spreadsheet 
prowess only goes so far, so you're going to have to go fetch these numbers. I'll show you how to do it. Go to the Active Clients sheet, scroll to the right for Initial Referral Date, this column. Highlight the entire column and click on Filter and Sort over here. Choose Filter. An arrow will appear at the top. Click on the arrow. And you can choose date filters. Choose custom filter at the bottom. Choose is after. So we're going to do in between dates. Basically, I like to see the referrals by month and plot that on a graph. So if I want to target the month of January 2014, I will say the date after 12-31-13 and is before 2114. So that's going to give me the month of January between 123113 and 2114. Click OK. You could also choose a different custom filter. If you go to date filters, go to the bottom and go to all dates in the period. If you're within the same year, you can just simply choose the month of your current year. So if I want the referral dates for this year of January, I can choose January. And then you will see only the referrals made in January. In order to quickly count those, if you have more than just a handful and you don't want to count them one by one, simply look over here in the left corner. It will tell you how many out of how many records. So we see four records right here. Now, if you have clients on your discharge client page, you need to do the same thing. Highlight the initial referral date column. Choose sort and filter and filter. Choose the arrow date filters. You can do custom filters by date or all dates in a period. And we did January. And you'll see two referral dates. Again, you can check down here in the left corner and it says two. If you have multiple referral dates and you quickly want to see how many there are. So add those up on the discharge client page and the active client page. We have two here. We have four here. That's six. Go to the graphs page. And you would input simply the month, January 2014, and the number was 6. Now, in order for that to be reflected on this graph over here, if you're in an older version of Microsoft Excel, you might have to make this graph physically go find that last date, or if you want to do specific dates within the time period, simply click on the graph and it will highlight the rows that it is calculating. You can simply drag that down to calculate the next row. Obviously this date is out of sequence, but you see how it works. If you only wanted to choose some different rows, you could do that also. I really like the referral count by month. It lets me have a good snapshot of when our referrals are coming and to see the cycle of our business. Once you have multiple months and even multiple years, it will be very clear what your business cycle is and what your referral cycle is. That way you can know when and how to increase and improve your marketing time and money. If you have any questions about this spreadsheet, please let me know by emailing me at scott at startatherapypractice.com. I also want to encourage you to check out my ebook, Start and Run a Therapy Practice, which you see here. You can see what it covers at startatherapypractice.com backslash ebook or check it out on Amazon. If you like the feel of this spreadsheet and find it helpful, you will want to check out my therapy progress note that is in spreadsheet format also. Now I've used this spreadsheet progress note since before I started my private practice and my therapists still use it, and they love it. There's a short video of what that progress note does and what it looks like. You can also check it out at my website, 
startatherapypractice.com backslash progress dash note or just look under products when you get there. If you are already in private practice and have not taken my private practice survey, you will want to do so in order to get the free ebook of the results which give you insight into private practice from other business owners who have taken the survey. To take that survey, go to my website and a pop-up should appear to direct you to the survey. If the pop-up does not appear, email me and I will send you the link. Again, this is only for those who are in private practice currently. Be sure to check out my podcast at startatherapypractice.com and in iTunes and Stitcher, where I interview other practice owners and thought leaders. Thank you again for your time. Remember that service to God, your family, and your fellow man is the only way and the best way to find ultimate fulfillment and joy in this world. Thank you for letting me be of service to you.